We told you earlier how the man charged with trying to extort $2 million from David Letterman is planning to fight the charges. Joe Halderman says he was not trying to blackmail Letterman. It was just a sales pitch for a screenplay. Joining us this morning from Santa Monica is Halderman's attorney, Gerald Chargell. And here in New York City with me in studio is attorney for David Letterman, Daniel Horowitz, from the law firm Dick Steed Shapiro. Gentlemen, good morning to you both. Good morning. And let me begin with good you, morning. Mr. Chargell. Yesterday you said that this was a commercial transaction and nothing more. But an early morning drop-off of a package that includes, according to prosecutors, evidence of Mr. Letterman's affairs and a letter claiming that Mr. Letterman's world was about to end if he didn't cough up the money does not give the appearance of a legitimate business transaction. It does, because there's so much more than that. If you look at all the circumstances in the case, and, and uh, unfortunately, uh, a, lot of, a lot of that information is uh, under seal, uh, but I've had an opportunity to look at that uh, information. If you look at all the circumstances of the case, it, 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 it shows clearly that this was a business transaction. Joe Holderman had intellectual property that he had a First Amendment right to, to sell. He could write a book. He could write a screenplay. He could offer a treatment perfectly proper, $2 million not out of line. Uh, we cited uh, case after case after case where, where um, there were multi-million dollar deals for sensational stories. And guess what? This is a sensational story. Um, but, but the, if he, the entire background. Why was, he ahead, only, why was he only trying to sell it to David Letterman, if not to give him the opportunity to keep it quiet if he wanted to? And doesn't that imply a threat? No, it doesn't imply a threat because the the fact that that he gave De David Letterman the right of first refusal uh, does does not increase the strength of the of the prosecution's case. Um, there there's nothing in the law that says that you have to first go to someone else, get a price, and and, and then come back to uh, to someone like David Letterman and 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 then offer it to him. Um, but, and, and also, I'm getting questions like, "Wow, it was six o'clock in the morning." Like. Um, First, it wasn't put in his car. David, uh, Joe Halterman didn't sneak around. He knew Mr. Letterman's driver. He, he, he knew when the driver picked him up, and he simply dropped off the package. Would it have been better if he, let, uh, if he put it in the mailbox or sent it FedEx? I don't think so. Um, I, I'm suggesting that all the circumstances in this case strongly, strongly support the proposition that this was a business transaction. All there right. was discussion of, uh, of, of tax consequences. There was discussion of, of what would happen if, the, if he disclosed the secret never the less, he would have to return the money. This had all indicia of a legitimate business transaction. All right. I'd like to bring in Mr. Mr. Horwitz and get his reaction to what you just said. Mr. Shargell said that once uh, everything that is still sealed is revealed, it will be clear that this was just about selling a screenplay and not extortion. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think the evidence, Maggie, you described that, this, that the district attorney has laid out is compelling evidence that this was not a legitimate business transaction. And any of the other evidence that there might be I think is only going to amplify, uh, you know, Mr. Haldeman's intent to blackmail Dave Letterman. Are you sure that prosecutors can prove that this was extortion? You know, I worked in that office for 10 years. Um, I've defended case against, uh, cases against that office. Bob Morgenthau has been a prosecutor for 50 years. I have absolute confidence that they will prosecute this case. So if this goes to trial, they decide to prosecute, and Mr. Letterman has to testify. Is he prepared? for questions that, that could reveal things that could be potentially further damaging to his career and reputation? He is absolutely prepared to testify and will answer all questions. Now, I think there's been a lot of misinformation, and there are a lot of things out there that are not relevant to the case. What's relevant in this case is, as you said at the outset, what was Mr. Halderman doing in the shadows of Dave Letterman's apartment building at 6 o'clock in the morning with a package that threatened to uh, ruin his world, uh, threatened him and his family, uh, unless you pay me a big chunk of money and get back to me in two hours. Let me ask Mr. Shargell uh, how it is relevant that, uh, as you said yesterday, Mr. Shargell, in your motion, that you discovered evidence that Letterman had created and fostered an environment of workplace sexual misconduct that under any definition amounted to actionable sexual harassment. How is that relevant to this extortion case? Are you just trying to smear David uh, Letterman now? No, no, not at all. It's, rel it's relevant because it increases the value of the intellectual property, and that's why it was worth $2 million, and that's why people would be interested in buying it, and that, that's, mm. that's what the value is all about. But let me say one other thing, if I may. W with, all, with all respect to Mr. Horowitz, and I know that he's a very good prosecutor, and now he's a, a defense lawyer, but, but let, me, let me say this. To, to say to you 
that that Bob Morgenthau has been a prosecutor for 50 years, and he said he had a strong case, and and uh, you, we should accept uh, what it is that he said. It doesn't matter that Mr. Horowitz hasn't reviewed the documents himself. If Bob Morgenthau said it, man, it must be true. Well, let me tell you something. What what the American justice system is all about is questioning a prosecutor and and saying to a prosecutor, you have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt that this that, that this activity violated the law, and I suggest to you that will never happen. Would Mr. Haldeman be willing to accept a plea deal if he's offered one? Has he been offered one? I, I made a motion to dismiss the case. And, right, but and, if that doesn't happen, uh, would, we're, we're, and they approach we him are, with a plea deal? We, I'll answer I'm sorry? If that doesn't happen, if the case is not dismissed and they approach him with a plea deal, would, would he consider taking it? No, if it, if it doesn't happen, the next thing that's going to happen is a trial. If, if the case is not dismissed, the next thing that's going to happen is a trial. All right. Gerald Chargell, thank you very much. Daniel Horowitz, thank you thank as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.